Hey, people with scientific temper, Pale Blue Thoughts is back and this time we are bringing you something which I really hate and it's something that has always really bugged me because it's just so confusing. Tickling. It's one of the great oxymorons in life like letting out a silent scream or asking someone to bring original copies. I mean, tickling does not make any sense because tickling makes us laugh, but we hate it too. I mean, go ahead and try it for yourself. Go try to tickle someone right now, but please ask them permission first because otherwise it would be rude. So, what did they do when you tried to tickle them? They would have asked you to stop because the almost universal reaction to tickling is to say no, stop it, please stop it, or I swear I will. Now I was having a phone call with my friend Rajesh and he happened to ask me what our next video is going to be and I said it would be on tickling and he immediately started laughing as of being tickled. That is the kind of effect tickling has on us humans. Even the threat of being tickled makes us laugh. I bet many would have laughed when you saw the title of the video. So in this video, we are going to try to find out some answers to why we are ticklish. What is it really for? And why is tickling the unfunniest thing that still makes us laugh? I'm sure you all have asked this question at some point. Why can't you tickle yourself? And the answer is of course, it depends. Because there are actually two different kinds of tickling. But the one that we are all familiar with, the one that makes you laugh and freak out, that is called the gargalesis. This is the kind of tickling you can't do to yourself. Almost everyone has been tickled before. We do it to make kids and babies laugh. Maybe you do it with someone you are feeling a little flirty with. People have been confused by tickling for thousands of years. Aristotle attributed our ticklishness to the softness of our skin and the fact that we are the only animals smart enough to find things funny. Charles Darwin theorized on the link between tickling and social relations, arguing that tickling provokes laughter through the anticipation of pleasure. If a stranger tickles a child without any preliminaries, catching the child by surprise, the likely result will not be laughter but withdrawal and displeasure. Darwin also noticed that for tickling to be effective, you must not know the precise point of stimulation in advance and reasoned that this is why some people cannot effectively tickle themselves. But Darwin being Darwin, he also guided us to ask an important question that we have to ask about weird behaviors like this. What is the evolutionary purpose? I mean, tickling wouldn't exist if it did not have some biological purpose either in us or in one of our ancestor species. So what is that? Clue number one. Only some areas of our body are susceptible to gargalesis. I mean, try to tickle someone's hand for instance and you're not going to get much of a reaction. But try tickling their tummy and you will get an instant reaction. It turns out that the other primates tickle each other too during a kind of rough and tumble play and this may hold some hints to why it exists. Our ticklish spots are really vulnerable like our ribcage armpits, neck, back of the knees, thighs and under our feet. I mean, these are the spots that a predator or an attacker would try to get you if they wanted to kill you. You've got major arteries on your necks and around the groin area and you've got important organs just below your ribcage and tummy. So when someone tries to get close to one of these spots, you tend to curl up in a little ball. It is actually a reflex guard. Garglesis 
probably evolved as a way to protect ourselves in the past and we continue to protect ourselves as a result of a reflex action. That is why those particular points are ticklish and what is more, garglesis is enjoyed only by primates. Hmm, strange. Ticklish spots don't really apply to the second kind of tickling known as nismesis. That is the feeling you get when you drag something really lightly across your skin. You can feel this almost anywhere on your body and the reaction can be anything from goosebumps to whole body shudder. Brah! Now, nismesis is not normally associated with laughter but some people do like it and it's actually pretty easy to guess where it might have come from. Watch any animal and they do this kind of tickling. My cats Smokey and Luna enjoy my Nismesis sessions on them and I have noticed that their ears twitch when you brush them. All the cat lovers out there, just be careful not to tickle their tummies unless you have a strong bonding with them. You could end up with a few scratch marks if you try. Horses and cows swish their tail when a fly lands on them while enjoying the Nismesis sensation. Just imagine a dozen spiders crawling up the back of the neck. Oh! Now that is something you really would want to notice. That is why it leads to the twitching and shuddering and scratching to get those potentially dangerous creepy crawlies off your skin. It is more of a reaction similar to an itch. So how does this work? When something touches you, all the nerve endings underneath the top layer of the skin react by sending electrical signals up to your brain. Those signals are sent to two different areas of the brain. The part that controls touch which is the somatosensory cortex. No, no, not tomato, somato. And the part that generates pleasant feelings, the anterior cingulate cortex. And the brain produces that feeling which you call tickling. Pretty cool, huh? Now, nismesis is a kind of tickling that you can do to yourself. Try it. Whee! So why does tickling makes us laugh? I mean, why does it not hurt or burn or just tingle? I mean, why is trying to protect your internal organs from would-be attackers appear funny? That brings us to clue number two. You can't tickle yourself. No matter how hard you try, you can't tickle yourself with gargleses. Nah, doesn't work. Why? It is for the same reason that you can't scare or startle yourself. You have a part of your brain that is always predicting your next move. The point is that my brain knows what I am trying to do and if I try to tickle myself, it just overrides the whole tickling program so for gargleses only other people can tickle us. That tells us tickling is social. Just like in the case of facial expressions or talking, it is sending a social message. Scientists who study this, yes, there is a species among us who actually do this for a living. They are called gelatologists. They study laughter. Now that's a pretty funny way to work. Now we have got two clues to help us figure out tickling. Number one, that ticklish spots are vulnerable places that we need to protect. And number two, you can't tickle yourself. So maybe the reason why we laugh is to get other people to tickle us. Yeah, even though we hate it. Now imagine tickling involved a negative reaction in people. Maybe if it made people cry or it hurt, well then you would probably stop doing it immediately. Laughter is like a positive reinforcement. It is a social message that makes the person tickling us happy and encourages them to keep doing it. It is a part of our social bonding. And why should they keep doing it? It is because rough and tumble play in animals is an important part of learning and development and growing up. Almost all animals indulge in it while growing up. 
See how puppies and cats are always play fighting with each other. And for our ancestors, it would have been important for their survival. It would have taught us lessons about fighting and hunting and protecting ourselves. On the other side, if tickling was only about laughter and pleasure and if it didn't give you that oh my god let me run away feeling, if you wouldn't recoil and try to fight back then it wouldn't teach you that all important lesson about protecting yourself. So tickling is probably an ancient social behavior from way back in our evolutionary process that enables us animals to learn to protect ourselves. And the laugh that is associated with tickling is not the same laugh that comes when you read something funny. We tend to think laughter is associated with something funny, but it is not. Gelatologists know from their research that we laugh for each other. People are more than 30 times more likely to laugh when they are with other people than if they are alone. Just watch two people having a normal happy conversation. There will be many moments during the conversation where they will go ha ha ha. No wonder lol and the laughing emoji is the most often used during smartphone conversations. We sometimes laugh just to fill space in a conversation or to let the other person know we are still listening. It is more like a social noise or filler. We now know that laughter leads to the release of beta endorphins. Beta endorphins are hormones that act like our body's natural painkillers. The point is that laughter is one of our most complex social behaviors that we use to send a ton of different messages, most of which have nothing to do with something being funny. So maybe it's not surprising that it is linked to tickling too. I am sure you have heard of the saying that you use around 10 muscles to frown and 30 muscles to laugh. Yeah, you are giving your facial muscles a good workout in the gym while you are laughing. Yes, there are some people who are immune to tickling. They don't seem to have the same reactions when you tickle them. Why? We don't know. Go ask a gelatologist. Maybe they are wired as weird and don't like social bonding. In a parent-child concept, tickling establishes at an early age the pleasure associated with being touched by a parent with a trust bond developed so that parents may touch a child in an unpleasant way should circumstances develop such as the need to treat a painful injury or prevent harm from danger. Many case studies have indicated that siblings often use tickling as an alternative to outright violence when attempting to either punish or intimidate one another. The sibling tickling relationship can occasionally develop into a tickle torture where one sibling will tickle the other without mercy. The motivation behind tickle torture is often to portray the sense of domination the tickler has over the victim. For more evidence, you may contact my brother. As with parents and siblings, tickling serves as a bonding mechanism between friends. But studies have shown that tickling works best when all the parties involved feel comfortable with the situation and one another. In case the person being tickled is not comfortable with it, Please don't resort to tickling. It can also be taken as a form of sexual harassment. He or she may laugh, but understand that the laughter associated with tickling is involuntary. The person might actually be feeling embarrassed or anxious. So here is what we know about tickling. Tickling is basically built into our bodies like a reflex and the places that are most ticklish are the places that we are most vulnerable. And even though we laugh, tickling is not funny. We tickle each other as part of a weird and complex kind of social play that our evolutionary ancestors taught each other to be safe. And laughter is the reward for our brains that makes us want to do it to each other. So the next time you want to tickle someone, tell them that you are teaching them life skills. But if they resent it, stay away. Remember, we are animals too 
and that is why tickling makes us feel so good deep down it helps reinforce social bonds with the people that we love oi i take it back i hate social bonding stay away this is corona time practice social distancing please bye bye from pale blue thoughts may the force of science be with ah no stop it